On the western shore of Treasure Island in San Francisco Bay, a young-looking man sat on the hood of a bright red 1960 Thunderbird convertible. Short and slight, he was wearing blue jeans with the ends ragged and frayed and both knees worn to threads. The wolf's head graphic on his t-shirt was faded to little more than a ghostly pattern and his cowboy boots were scuffed and needed new soles and heels. His unkempt appearance, long hair and stubbly beard, were in stark contrast to the gleaming car he was sitting on, which looked as if it had just been driven out of the showroom. The young man had $29 and change in his wallet. The car was worth at least 1,000 times that. Next to him on the hood of the car was an ancient antique Anasazi pottery bowl decorated in elegant black and white angular geometric patterns. A thick liquid filled the bowl, a mixture of honey, flaxseed oil, and water, and reflected in the liquid was the figure of Penelope Flamel striding across Alcatraz, the black blanket of spider and fly corpses opening up before her in a wave. So this was the legendary Penelope Flamel. The young man moved his finger clockwise over the liquid and his bright blue eyes sparkled, turning briefly crimson, the hint of cayenne filling the air. The image of Prenelle zoomed in. He watched her stop and frown, the lines on her forehead deepening, and she looked around quickly, almost as if she knew that someone was watching her. He waved his hand and the liquid trembled, the image dissolving. Folding his arms across his thin chest, the man turned his face to the west, where Alcatraz was hidden in the gloom. It seemed as if everything he had heard about the woman was true. Prinelli was that most lethal of combinations, both beautiful and deadly. He was momentarily at a loss. Should he attack again, or should he wait? Lifting his hand to his face, he breathed deeply and his aura glowed a deep purple red, a shade darker than the Thunderbird, and the salt sea air was tainted with the odor of red pepper. He still had enough power left to do... what? Calling the flies had been relatively easy. An Indian shaman had taught him that trick and had saved his life on more than one occasion. Poisoning the flies had been his elder master's suggestion, and his master had even supplied the pool of poisoned water in Solano County, north of the city. The plan was to destroy Arab Enop's army of spiders and murder the elder. And it had almost succeeded! The mass of spiders were dead, and the old spider was very close to death. But at the last minute, something had drawn the flies away from Alcatraz in a great pulsing cloud. In the oily liquid in the scrying bowl, the young man had seen the silver-white flicker of Penelope's aura and knew she had been responsible. His thin face twisted in a grimace and he bit nervously onto his bottom lip. He had been assured that she was weakened, incapable of any display of her powers. Obviously, that information had been incorrect. The thick liquid began to bubble and cloud, then to hiss and steam away. The scrying spell had a limited lifespan. Slipping off the hood of the car, the young man tossed the sticky remnants onto the ground, then carefully washed out the bowl with a bottle of water and dried it with a chamoy cloth before putting it in the trunk of the car, nestling it in a small foam-filled metal suitcase. The bowl was one of the most precious objects he owned, and even when he had been desperately poor, he had never thought about selling it. Sitting in the red leather interior of the car, he opened a manila envelope and read through the file he had been sent by encrypted email. A severe-looking white-haired man glared out of the black-and-white photograph. He had been caught mid-stride as he crossed the street. The Eiffel Tower loomed over the rooftops in the background, and the date stamp on the bottom of the photograph revealed that it had been taken on Christmas Eve, six months ago. Idly, the young man wondered why the Dark Elders were watching one of their most trusted agents. This was the man they were sending to work with them, the European immortal Niccolo Machiavelli. The Elders' instructions had been unambiguous. He was to offer Machiavelli every assistance. He wondered if the Italian was anything like John D. He had met D briefly and didn't like him. He was the one of these arrogant European immortals who thought they were better than anyone else just because they were older than the United States. But reading through Machiavelli's file, he found himself liking the man more and more. Ruthless, cunning, and scheming, he was described as the most dangerous man in Europe. He'd help Machiavelli, of course, he didn't really have any choice. Going against the Dark Elders was tantamount to a death wish. Personally, he didn't believe he needed the Italian. Tossing the file on the floor, he turned the key in the ignition, pushed hard on the accelerator and spun the wheel, and the car fishtailed into a semicircle, billowing dust and grit in its wake. Billy the Kid had never needed anyone. 